Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Mini, a true nerd, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, where I find myself in a slightly unexpected position, mainly because, yeah, I'm gonna be honest, succession laws in this game are really complicated, they're like the hardest thing to get your head around, so I feel no shame whatsoever for not seeing this coming, but England's back! England's back now, back in English hands, managing its own affairs, no longer being ruled by Norway. But they, they left me out. They didn't invite me to the birthday party. I was the one kid in class that was not invited to the party. No one even told me there was going to be a party. I just looked over the road and the party was happening and everyone just pretended they couldn't see me. So there I am, a little bit in Norway, stuck out the corner of England. So that's just flipping great. <laughs> Anyway, today I want to start off with what's going to be a recurring feature on occasion. A wonderful, wonderful segment I call, Let's Talk About All The Things That John Got Wrong. Yay! Because, yes, unfortunately, Crusader Kings 2 is slightly complicated. And while I put, like, 20, 30 hours into it, there's going to be loads of stuff I get wrong, especially about succession. So, if I actually make mistakes, I am going to try and correct them. Because I know a lot of people might not actually be experts in this game. And a lot of people might not have actually played this game at all. So, when I say things, you might assume they're going to be true. Terrible idea, but you might have made that assumption. So, let's talk about a couple of things. So some of the characters who I brought into my realm because I basically wanted them to pass on traits, you can't pass on those traits. Square traits, I think I'm getting this right now, a square trait is an education trait. A trait that someone has picked up on account of a good quality education and a focus that they were given. With the little dots at the bottom representing how good it is. So for example, this here blue square means that is a diplomacy education trait. The fact that it has got four little dots on the bottom means that it's level four, and I think level four is as good as it gets. So this person here, who happens to be my daughter, marvellously, actually has a really, really, really damn good education trait in the form of her diplomacy, which is beautiful, hence diplomacy plus nine. Meanwhile, this person over here, the Mayor of Axminster, has got himself level three, charismatic negotiator. So he's still got a pretty good education perk when it comes to diplomacy, but not quite as good. The perks I actually should have been looking for in terms of passing on traits to children are the ones inside hearts. If it's inside a heart, that means it's a genetic trait that can be passed on. So things like strong and quick and stuff like that. So that's really what I should be looking for in terms of potentially trying to breed good quality courtiers of the future. The most common round ones just seem to be generated as characters grow and just basically they're just generic traits of which there are many. So apologies for that. Next up, the de Ure stuff, because I did make a pretty big mistake on the de Ure stuff. So I said that English England wasn't going to be happy because England wasn't being ruled by England. England was Norway. That was completely 100% incorrect. The thing was, the King of Norway had a strong claim on England, enforced that claim, and therefore picked up the title of the King of England. So as far as everyone's concerned, everything's legit because the title of the King of England was being held by a person who had a strong claim on England and was holding all of England. So everything was hunky-dory. Everyone hated Harold Hardrada anyway, but they hated him because he was a foreigner and he'd recently waged a war in diddly diddly dee. So they hated him for other reasons, but de jure wise, it was all 100% fine. It would have been a problem if, say, for the sake of argument, Harold Hardrada had decided to actually try and enforce a claim on East Anglia. If he'd come over here, taken just the Duchy of East Anglia and brought that under his personal control into Norway, at that point, the King of England would have had a rightful de jure claim to go and reclaim that. Because the point of de jure, and I hope I'm getting this right this time, is basically that somebody who exists within the feudal system has a right to everything that ought to live under him. So the King of England has a right to all the duchies that are supposed to be within England. If there's a duchy that's supposed de jure to be part of England that is not, the rightful King of England therefore has the right to actually declare a de jure war to get that back. I think those are the two biggest things I got wrong. So let's crack on with where we are right now, which is in... Uh, a bit of an odd position, now I'm just a bit of Norway stuck off the side of England. So, let's see what we've got here. So, the new King of Norway, and now just the King of Norway, no longer holds the title of anything else. But actually, are you holding any of the... the duchies in England at all by any chance? No, you're not. Fine. So you no longer hold anything in England whatsoever. King Magnus II of Norway just holds Norway. And right now, me and him are actually in pretty good shape. So he actually, yeah, pretty much really likes me. We've got marriage ties. We're both zealous. Everything is good. 
And I really like him as well. Yeah, defending versus foreigners, zealous, humble, marriage ties. Me and him get on fine. And more importantly, we've got a non-aggression pact. So hopefully, he's not going to cause any trouble for me. In all fairness, he's got plenty of trouble to deal with over in Norway. I can just fly under his radar. Not a big deal. So with Norway, we're okay. The slight problem, however, is that non-aggression pact means I can't really get away from Norway because... I'm not sure how much longer I really want to stay part of Norway, to be honest. So, uh, we'll have to pick the right moment to potentially break that pact. Which you can't do right now because there's a war going on. Just like in Stellaris, you can't do big things diplomatically while one of the players is involved in a war. So I need to let that Scottish war end first. England, meanwhile, is in a fascinating position right now. So... What have we got right here? So his opinion of Cadog is actually pretty good. State diplomacy is high, prestige is high, but honestly, me and him, we just don't really have much in the way of a relationship. So I have immediately deployed my Chancellor, whose job right now is to, yeah, basically improve relations with that guy. Ah, I've actually given him the wrong job, unfortunately. I've actually just given him improved diplomatic relations, which appears to be only for my Lord. So, actually, I should have told him to get on with performing statecraft, where I could have actually improved relationships with him. Okay, fine. Well, if you're stuck doing that job until the 6th of April, 1080, you may as well nip over to Norway and just go and, you know, see what you can do there. Never mind, I can't move him either. Right, you're just useless for the next six months. Got it. My mistake. Well, in either case, we'll keep an eye on England. Interesting things could happen. Because my interest is really around this part of the world. Like, for the time being, I can't break free of Norway. Because to break free of Norway, I'll need to break the non-aggression pact and then wage a war of independence. That's a little way off. I'm not really big or strong enough to pull that off full stop. Instead, I think Wales. Wales is the answer. Because my future could be making myself the King of Wales. I'll need to be independent before I can do that, however. You can't declare yourself a king because I'm being governed by a king. My liege is a king. So I can't make myself a king because otherwise that would, like, free myself from him and you can't king yourself into freedom. So I'll need to wage a war of independence before I can form a kingdom. But before I even think about that, I need to own enough of Wales to consider being able to do that. So probably, oh bloody hell, I need more than one flipping Chancellor. Because really, I need my Chancellor to go over here and start fabricating some claims on this bastard. Now, if you've got a good memory, you may well be thinking, John, didn't you marry a guy into your faction specifically for the purpose of being able to get hold of Wales? I did. And that may have been a little bit of an error. You see, the guy I married in has precisely three strong claims on the Duchy of Powys, the Petty Kingdom of De De Herbeth, I have pronounced that, and the Petty Kingdom of Gwyneth. Unfortunately, Petty Kingdoms are effectively just the Welsh Celtic way of saying Duchy. So that's this Duchy right here, and Gwyneth is this Duchy up here, which also seems to include the Duchy of Powys, but whatever, there's some weird stuff going on in Wales I don't fully 100% understand. The problem is... If I basically decide to declare war on these guys, and I could do any second I wanted to in order to push this guy's claim, I'm effectively going to make him a duke of this area. Now, I'm a duke. If I basically push his claim to make him a duke, that means the territory will not fall in to the Empire or the realm of Cornwall. He will become an independent duke because a duke can't report in to another duke. The same problem I was talking about earlier with kings and Norway. Feudalism. It's got to be properly structured. The only person who can control a duke is the level above that in the hierarchy, which is a king. Until I'm a king, I cannot enforce somebody else's claim on a duchy, otherwise we'll just end up with an independent duchy. Now, it will be a very friendly duchy that will like me an awful, awful lot, but it doesn't directly help me. So if I want to take these territories over, I only need to actually engineer claims for Caddock or his children myself. The alternative would be Ireland, which right now is very divided into lots of very, very tiny independent earls. So, yeah, this area, this is independent, this is basically independent. I think all of these are independent too. These are just loads of tiny counts and, well, they're technically called kings, but they're kings of very, very small areas. Effectively, they're just independent vassal counts, or earls, as they would be called if they were in England. So potentially looking around for some very convenient claimants that we might happen to have floating around, like, for example, yeah, 
The court chaplain of this guy is very willing to be lured away to my court, might make a decent court chaplain for me, and then if we were just to grant him some land, like granting him this little bit of land up here, then we actually try and enforce his claim, we could take over the southern tip of Ireland. But that's for the future. What I want to do first is just let time tick along a tiny bit, because England has just undergone a pretty darn major change. A brand new king, and quite frankly, a surprising king, to my mind. King Magnus of England has, yeah, he holds the Kingdom of England, fine. He also holds the Duchy of... not even going to attempt it, which is, I think, this one over here, and the County of Oxford. So the amount of territory he holds is not particularly big. He was a small fish in England. I don't really know why all of the Dukes would have ended up voting for him. In addition, he's got extremely low diplomacy. I feel like this guy is going to have trouble keeping England stable. So I want to see what actually goes on in England before I make any big policy decisions. Not least as, I believe in about two months, I can actually have a little look -see at the succession to see what I can change it to. Because someone did flag, I might have all the options I want available to me, because some of them are tied behind technology. Because you need to use legalism to unlock some rather fancy stuff, like technology that leads to more succession options. There's the date. I need the 16th of December in 1079. Then, we can make some changes. Hopefully, before Caddock dies. Just hold on. I know you're suffering from the Great Pox right now. I know. It's probably really bad. And we don't ask questions about where it came from. But just hold on for just a couple more months. Ah, meanwhile, up in Norway, King Magnus of Norway is actually figuring out how to distribute his territory because he can't manage it directly. Oh, thank you to the people who flagged, by the way. The really useful thing the game never mentions, which is if you're in the realm map, hold control and then just click on a territory. That territory, and then only that territory, gets flicked over to the actual direct vassal view. So therefore you can keep everyone else in realm view, which is very useful because realm view lets you kind of more easily see when something is or isn't being attacked or under siege or changing hands or whatever. So yeah, that's really, really cool indeed. So as a result of that, we can see what he's trying to keep hold of. And apparently I voted for that. Um, did I agree to vote with someone? Is that what's going on here? Well, the game didn't actually ask me to vote on that, so I'm not quite sure why I didn't vote on that. Still, the nice thing about uh, Norway being a bit smaller is, yeah, I've got a much better chance of ending up in a decent position on the council. So that's good, at least. Ah, yes, of course, and there's still some wacky wars going on up in Scotland, where this territory is being slowly sieged out by the actual forces of Norway, and the forces of Scotland are just over in Norway sieging out stuff over there as well. In fact, they seem to be doing it faster and more efficiently. That war's going badly. So quite frankly, I would love Norway to just go and lose another war and lose more troops because a weak Norway works for me. A weak Norway can't really do anything to me. All of the dukes will cause trouble. I might be able to actually seize my independence sooner rather than later. So uh, we'll have to have a think about that. Possibly after this war, if they manage to lose to Scotland, which I suspect they're going to because it looks like yeah, the entirety of the Norwegian forces would have to pull together into one block just to stand a chance against the actual forces of Scotland there. Scotland seems to have the much more powerful army. Dear father and lord peace be with you, we've decided to offer you the position of commander. Do you- No! <laughs> you think I'm going to lead that army when you're at war with Scotland? No. Sorry. Bye. He's not going to like that, is he? Well, no. Would you believe I'm not- Oh, Hello! Oh, England's falling apart much faster than I was expecting here. What's just gone on? English Revolt, the Duchy of East Anglia and the Duchy of Essex, all reporting in to the English Revolt, currently held by Harold Godwinson of Got... Hang on, isn't that the... That's the king's dad, isn't it? Hang the flip on here. The king is... Yeah, he's currently leading troops in Wiltshire. So the king, King Magnus of England... So he, with only, oh, his personal level is only 3,000. Oh, he's in a really weak position right now. He's in an appalling position. So he is, let's go over to his family. Yeah, abso flipping lootly. There's, wait, the coast of, the coast of Iceland? Is he? How'd he, how'd he get up there? Also, that's technically Ireland, not Iceland. Where's the... Okay, no, that, that is where he's going. He's currently... Why? 
Why were you up there? Was this where you were being kept prison? In Iceland? I don't know, but... Okay. This is all very fascinating. So, Harold, formerly Harold II, has decided to respond to England regaining its independence with his own son at the helm by immediately declaring a rebellion against him. And I wish I was still part of England. This is fun. I want to see this. Right, I'm going to break up this into its constituent parts. So, yeah, the current situation in England is Essex and East Anglia have gone rogue. Meanwhile, Wessex, Kent what's left of the one I can't pronounce, and more importantly, Mercia, are loyalist. Now, surely Mercia, just by itself, has enough troops. Except, of course, for the small problem that, yeah, all his own actual vassals hate him too. I'm not sure this King Magnus of England's gonna be around for too much longer. And unsurprisingly, poor old Morcar feels a bit hard done by. His preferred heir would be Duke Morcar. He's voting for himself. But right now, the vote is for Duke Wolfnot of Wessex. Okay, so because this system is... Hang on. King of England, Agnatic Elective. Fine. So all of the Dukes get a vote. And currently, their preferred candidate is this Duke Wolfnot. And quite frankly, I feel that it's very harsh that Morcar isn't top. Like, he owns a lot of land. Well, we'll keep an eye on that to see what goes on. Though, actually, if I put this back into... Realm view, I'll be able to see if anybody starts occupying anybody else because, uh, yeah, there's gonna be trouble sooner or flipping later. By the way, here we go. In comes the. Oh, yep, thankfully our Chancellor is actually there to help give some visibility to what's going on there. So that's Morcar, who's got himself 1,600 troops. Okay, just out of interest, um, yeah, Harold of the English Revolt. Oh, you can call up 3,500. You might actually be able to do some very bad damage. Ouch. Things are not going to go well for England. Now, can't help but notice it's the 19th of December. So I bloody better be able to finally change the inheritance laws. Has reigned for at least 10 years. I hate you, game. Seriously. 16th of December, 1069. It's the 19th of December, 1079. Do you need it to be next month or something? Come on, seriously, let's just get past Christmas here. I need to get on with this. I might die of the great pox any bloody second, despite the cat I consumed. You know what? We'll just check back in on that, because despite the fact I have reigned for 10 years since the last time I changed my primary title to be the Duke of Cornwall, it is absolutely refusing to let me change that. But while I've got a happy council, I will take this opportunity to... Well, okay. I could either centralise or... I could actually get the revoke title law in. Now, okay. Two would support. Two would be opposed. One is undecided. And I have the deciding vote. So, even in the event that the mayor actually voted against, because I get a vote and the event of a tie I'm deciding, that should automatically pass, I believe. Let's have Luke see... Who's actually not voting for this? Uh, why not? Opinion is less than 59. Your opinion less than 59. Okay, any chance we can just quickly change that round? Ah, uh, yes, your position is 57. So how would you like some stupid honorary title? There you go, Master of the Horse. That strikes me as a good sort of thing for one of my main commanders. So send that over to him. He goes up to 62, return to the laws, and at this point, that should... Sorry, why did you just change over to... Oh, you've just changed over from opponent to undecided. Fine, I'm going to get the revoked title law in while the council is peaceful, just in case Caddock's about to fall over dead, because I'm deeply worried that he doesn't seem to be recovering from his illness. He's doing okay, but he could still drop dead at any minute. So, shove that over there. Let time tick by. So we've got one vote in favour. That's my vote. Two votes in favour. Hendrik votes with me. Four currently undecided. I think I just need one more vote, then it automatically passes. Because at that point, the worst it can be is three and three with me deciding it. So that should be absolutely fine. Anytime you're ready. Also, oh. Yeah, trouble in England. Trouble in England. Lots of flipping trebuchets. Also, it looks like Magnus II had the exact same bloody idea. He also wants the title. Oh. You see, I kind of want to be able to revoke titles. I rather he didn't actually 
because I don't want him to actually, you know, potentially revoke any of my titles. I'm going to say no, okay? Let's just not let you revoke titles. But I want to be able to revoke titles, that's fine. No one told the council I just said that, because they're not going to be impressed. Okay, Lords of Cornwall have approved the law. So now, if I need to, I can take someone's title back off them. Also, I can't help but notice that uh, my daughter, who's Queen of Norway, she's actually in one of the territories that the Scottish have just actually taken over. So, I feel less good about Scotland now. Please stop besieging her. I mean, I assume she'd be in the county capital, so unfortunately, uh, yeah, the actual Queen of Norway is currently held by the flipping Scots, which I really hope Magnus II considers a big deal, otherwise that'd be a bit unfortunate. So, what have we got going on over here? We actually have, yeah, the Duchy of Essex being held by the English Revolt. This place appears to be being attacked. However, who are you exactly? This is... This is the army of Harold himself. Okay, so that will be the former Harold II, who's currently actually besieging out flipping Oxford. So yeah, there we go. Attackers Harold of the English Revolt, defenders King Magnus of England. Blimey! That is just not being a supportive father at all. He claims that is the war against the tyranny of King Magnus of England. In all fairness, everyone got a vote. It's literally the least tyrannical thing imaginable. You've got flipping democracy over there for whatever reason. I mean, not a very good democracy. Democracy in which there are like seven people in the entire country that get a vote, but still, kind of. Oh, bloody hell, it finally became available. I'm not sure what finally triggered it, but... I can actually change the succession laws. Now, I'm going to be honest, I was going to go over to primogeniture. And the reason for that was just because it makes things simple. Because everything just goes to the main heir. The problem is, I can't. Because one of the rules is, yeah, you've got to actually have late feudal administration. Which I think is tied behind legalism 4. Which I do not have yet because, technology-wise, we're only up to 96 in cultural advances. My legalism is at 2. So I'm going to need that to be like, yeah, I think 600 or... No, actually, apparently, um, late feudal administration is behind 3. So I need 300 culture points before I can get that up. So that's not happening. Then I'd need to change the realm law, change administration to late. So I can't do that now until 1085. So in general, that's not going to work out. In fact, a bunch of stuff I was planning for is not going to work out. Because uh, right now, third on my list is actually Prince Ragnar of Norway. Who's obviously naffed off to Norway because that is my grandson, my daughter's son. Now the relationship with Norway was nice, but now I've got someone who's not actually part of my dynasty located third in my succession queue. Which makes me nervous, especially as Rio is right there, and Rio does indeed remain a part of my faction. So, in a perfect world, I wouldn't have minded going over to Absolute Cognatic in order to actually make women inherit on the same basis as men. But I can't do that, because once again, you need to actually have gender equality, full status of women, etc, etc. I think that's again tied behind legalism, so I can't do that either. Yeah, agnatic cognatic means men and women can both inherit, but men get precedence. Agnatic is men only. Absolute cognatic, it doesn't matter, it's just the oldest. So that would, oh, but that would also cause the problem that uh, the Queen of Norway would actually jump up to second in the queue. So probably best I don't do that. Right, what are my options in terms of succession in that case? Because what's going to happen right now when Caddock eventually dies of syphilis is the titles of the ruler are divided among his children, oldest getting the primary title. So as a result, my eldest son, John, will become the Duke of Cornwall. Next up, yeah, my second oldest son will simply become the Vassal Count, County of Glamorgan, presumably reporting in to John as a Duke. Third up, this guy gets, yeah, he gets Norway. So you know what? Just leave my territory alone. Just be happy with Norway. So if Caddock falls dead now, unfortunately, I'm going to have two young kids. Which is, yeah, a bit of a shame that it took me so long to get a son out. So, the alternatives are elective gavel kind. So, titles of the ruler divided among his children, the primary heir. But the primary heir is elected from among members of the ruling dynasty. Okay, so similar, but with a bit of an election thrown in. Junior heirs always get the chance to declare independence with... Oh, no! No, 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 no. We're not having flipping Kador declare independence. That's a definite no-no. Seniority, the oldest member of the dynasty inherits all titles. 
Okay, that's not great, but it might work as a decent stopgap until primogeniture is ready to go. So, the ruler and every lower rank vassal can nominate a successor from among themselves and legitimate children and siblings of the ruler. So, yeah, lower rank vassals, i.e. dukes if I was a king, but I'm a duke, so presumably vassal counts. But, I don't have any vassal counts because, well... Technically, I have underlings, so do all the mayors and whatever get a vote to? Still, I like the fact that potentially one person gets everything. Ah, but problem, the vassals don't like it if one person holds too much sway over it, and in this case, that will be 100% true. Now, someone mentioned this one to me. Apparently, this is a bit of a special one that I get because I'm Breton or Celtic or something. So, the ruler and all vassals at one and two ranks below can nominate an heir the Tannist, from among the members of the ruler's dynasty. Vassals will tend to favour older members from other branches of the family, especially claimants. So, okay, one and two levels below would definitely include mayors, because duke, down to vassal, down to mayors and bishops and whatever. So everyone gets a flipping vote at that point, so... Yeah, trying to figure out who would actually become king would be a nightmare, because random mayors I've never heard of might decide to throw off the bloody election. You know what? Screw it. We're going to be able to change it to primogeniture later. Let's give Tanistry a go. This just seems kind of fun. Because if I'm reading this right, the one advantage to Tanistry is there's absolutely no way that the title can ever move outside of your dynasty. Because while just about everyone inside your dynasty is eligible, only the dynasty is eligible, so it is pretty safe, and in all fairness, if my son, if poor John, doesn't actually get to be king, because he's too young and they just kind of vote for my half-brother, the guy whose wife I didn't sleep with, so that's definitely not where the syphilis came from, then honestly that doesn't really matter, because you know, he'll get on a bit, he'll die, John will have his turn in time. Screw it, let's activate the tanistry and see who everyone feels like voting for. Oh, I'm probably going to regret this, aren't I? But it just sounds fun. And it will make us, I imagine, pretty much the most democratic state in the world right now. So bring it the hell on! And immediately, successor nomination becomes a thing. So everyone's now got to figure out who the bloody hell they're voting for. So, here we are, the brand new line of succession, where there's now a new thing. Supporters. The question is, I imagine this is going to start changing momentarily, because everyone presumably does actually get the votes. Also, apparently my domain is too big all of a sudden. Ah, it's because I got bonus domain off the old election style, so now I can't actually directly control anywhere near as much. Well, this place produces very little tax over here in Glamorgan, so how about we just get someone settled down here? And I think I know who the right person for that might be. Here we go, my son-in-law. Now, are you actually good at anything? Honestly, you're not great, are you? I wouldn't mind having you settled because uh, you are Welsh. There we go, Welsh Celtic, and this area is Welsh Celtic. Now, I don't know for certain that actually makes a difference to the local happiness, but I'm going to assume it does. Because, yeah, culture Welsh, that's got to go down well putting a Welsh person in. Though then again, my extremely good quality Chancellor is also Welsh, and I kind of feel like I wouldn't mind rewarding him. Yeah, you're a good egg. You seem to be a good manager, diligent, patient, honest, charitable, brave. Currently suffering from diarrhea. Pretend you didn't see it. Apparently that's inheritable. <laughs> Hope he doesn't pass that on to his children. That'd be very unfortunate. Yeah, this guy, he seems like a good guy. All right, he's done excellent work for me. I think he could do with being rewarded quite frankly, and he's Welsh, we put him in there, we keep the other guy in our court, that's all absolutely fine, I think he still keeps being our Chancellor, you my good man, I'm going to grant you a landed title, and I think, hang on, you, if I recall correctly, you're not part of the dynasty, so you don't get to stand, but you will get a very important vote momentarily, won't you, because you'll become a vassal. Oh, well, I'm going to grant him a landed title. He's Welsh and he deserves this, all right? He's done well by me. There we go. Domain size back to what it should be. Lovely. So that guy, as a count, now actually checks in with me. Marvellous. So I'm his liege and King Magnus of Norway, at least for the time being, is mine. And so far, the line of succession goes... Conan Mab Dumnav 
my nephew because he's managed to gather one supporter. I think that's literally just the first vote that was Kaz. So, in all fairness, he wouldn't even be a terrible kid. 11 on Diplomacy is actually pretty decent. 8 on Stewardship's nice. Charismatic Negotiator. Trusting, just, cruel, temperate. It's not even that bad, quite frankly. Go ahead. Elect him, King. Go on, why not? Ah, uh, yes, that reminds me. Uh, Janna, did you ever recover from... No, you never actually recovered from the gentle warts. Um, Janna, we should probably get you married off at some point. Because otherwise you just keep going around having an affair. And I think I know the right person to marry you off to. How about we find someone nice and low down the succession queue of England? Not because we actually want to take over England or anything, just because it might be nice to... Oh, blimey. Well, this is all a bit of a mess, isn't it? Right, well, let's actually just find... Yeah, King Magnus, let's just find one of your children. Oh, you've only got one daughter. That doesn't help. Oh, and bless all of King Magnus's siblings have actually joined the English revolt. Every single one of them. He's basically on his flipping own. Okay, but this child, being a girl, is never going to inherit anything. I just need to find someone nice and young inside my family to get betrothed to, ideally. Let's just find someone nice and useless, and... You are apparently the Tannist of Cornwall. I thought the other guy was current. Never mind, we'll get back into that in a second. So I could marry my second son to this girl. That would get me a non-aggression pact with England. I just want to hold off for the time being, because I'm not convinced this King Magnus is necessarily going to be around for too much longer. In fact, right now, yes, the war score is 16% in favour of Harold of the English Revolt. Now, I think, if I recall correctly, Harold actually used to quite like me. Does he still like me? Yep, yeah, in all fairness, he's absolutely fine with me. So, potentially we wait and see how this war shakes out before we go making any marriage alliances, but... Trying to lock down England to not attack me, that would be marvellous. One other thing as well, while things are nice and quiet, I should probably actually get working on technology now technology is a thing of mine, because I do actually need some technology points. So, these are things that my spy master and court chaplain and all sorts of other stuff can do. So my spy master right now could get on with studying technology, ah, but he's not so good, so his chance of success isn't massive. But, stealing technological marvels might be of interest. You see all these countries down here that are pretty darn advanced. How about we head down to, probably not the papacy, that's probably a bit on the dangerous side. Head over to Capua and just basically start spying on all of their business and seeing what you can figure out. And my court chaplain can do the same thing. That is, uh, hang on, that's cultural tech, so uh, great philosopher. Oh, that's, that's a really low chance of success. Instead, I'm going to actually try and improve religious relations uh, with the Pope. Because me and the Pope could probably do with being friends. Being friends with the Pope is probably a really, really good idea. Now, as for my marshal, yeah, he could actually make the army cheaper, suppress revolts, train troops, or research military tech. Ah, military technology spread rate plus 95%. Actually, I'll leave him where he is for the time being. I'm happy with those two just naffing off somewhere else. And before I forget and die without nominating, who do I want to be the next ruler? Okay, so right now, we got this guy right here. The thing is, is anyone going to go for John? Because John has the problem of... Sorry, why do you not like me? Oh, because I changed the succession order to screw you over. Well, screw you too. In all fairness, I don't even know if you're good right now. You're willful. You're indolent. You're an idolizer. Like, some of those are okay. They're not exactly spectacular. Ah, speaking of my brother, however, unfortunately, it turns out he's terrible. Zero at diplomacy. Zero at martial. Eleven stewardship's all right, but we're going to need to come up with better than that. You know, I wouldn't even mind it being Rio, to be honest. Like, Rio has got some good stuff about her. Grey Eminence is great, Gregarious, Chaste. Chaste is not great, to be honest, because, yeah, less chance she'll actually be popping out children of her own. But, not bad. More piety. Zealous is good. Temperate's good. Wouldn't be terrible, to be honest. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, she's eligible, because she's in this list. And with that 16, yeah, 16 and 8. That's not bad at all. Except I'm wondering whether everyone else will be less keen on voting for a woman. To be honest, the guy who they've nominated, my just random nephew, he's not terrible, is he? He's alright. 
Well, you know what? I'm going to put Rio in. I'm actually going to nominate Rio right now. I'm pretty sure in the event of a tie, I get the deciding vote. I'm just not sure whether anyone's actually going to go for her necessarily. Just because, you know, 11th century and all of that. Also, I should spend some of this money, by the way. I know I've been kind of saving it up to pay back the money as I borrowed it off. But there is, of course, another very important thing I can do with it. I haven't really shown off yet. So you can actually do improvements to all of these here. Cities, churches, all the rest of it. So say, City of Bodmin, right over here. You can spend money if you want to. There's... Why is the city shipyard here already being upgraded? I never actually ordered that. Did I order that? Was that an event? I don't remember ordering that. Well, my capital's not receiving any improvements right now. So yeah, that's actually yielding 19 gold. And I could if I wanted to. Yes, improve the castle walls. So that just gets that up by another 0 0.2, which doesn't sound like much, especially as it's going to cost 72. So it's going to take a long time to pay for. But those castle walls will also increase the fort level and the levy size. And until the fort level has actually been increased, yeah, castle walls up to castle walls too, a whole bunch of other stuff cannot actually be built. So, for example, ah, here we go. If I were to get castle walls up to castle walls too, then I could actually upgrade this place into a castle town. Now, that's worth plus two tax income. Now, that at that point becomes uh, pretty darn impressive. That's actually kind of important and big. The alternative, of course, is I could focus on just being able to have more troops present and correct, just for the sake of security and all that business. Yeah, pretty much everywhere having walls too seems to be a precondition for doing just about anything. So go on then, Cornwall, this is nice and cheap. Why don't you get on with castle walls going up to level 2? So that's apparently going to take, like, well over a year. So... I mean, I could actually reassign my steward. I think that's one of the things he can do. So what he can do is uh, he could halve that. However, if he were to actually halve that, and in addition, there's actually a chance he might meet a master builder while he was doing it. la da However, that would mean I'd lose like 45% of my Cornwall tax. Hmm. I could actually see the advantage of that. And also, administer realm, including domain improvements. What does that mean? Right, just went to look that up. Apparently it causes, like, little events to pop up more frequently or something. So we'll probably just leave that be for the time being. I'll just take the 45% tax increase. So, I guess now we just let time tick along and... Uh, yep, I've got a new heir. Because at this exact moment in time, there's one vote for each of us. And in the event that those were to be the only votes and I were to die tomorrow, I'd actually have the deciding vote there. So that's why she's the actual heir. But that will probably change momentarily, depending on who votes on what. Because she does actually seem to be the most qualified person in the realm to take over. And... Hello. What's this? My liege, peace be with you. I gladly accept the guardianship contract. Ah! I just asked this guy to basically uh, manage one of the children. So you just basically handle that. And... Uh, I'm assuming, therefore, someone has just put her... No, I think that was just hidden underneath that one. Because she should still be ruling if it is indeed one and one. Oh, no, it's not. It's gone up to flipping four. Everyone has just said... Oh, everyone's voting for that guy. <laughs> right. So, right now, Conan. Conan shall be our new king. Uh, well, no fairness, you're not bad. You're not bad at all. You're no barbarian. Alright, you know Barbarian at all, and how old are you right now? You are 18, and you are next in line to the throne. So the moment you get up to the throne, it'll be time to get you married, because you suddenly will be potentially quite a catch. Would you mind taking off the robe, by the way? I feel like you're not going to attract a good wife with the robe. So, yes, unfortunately, it would appear that... Ooh, one vote for... Sorry, who voted for Alan? Alan's not very good, and hello, who's... Who's loading something or another? Please support by voting with me. Yeah, you know what? I could do with a flipping favour, actually, over in Norway. So this guy is Duke Loden. And, yep, obviously he controls the duchy. abso flipping lootly I will vote with you in return for a favour. So, what's going on in England in the meantime? It is, yeah, Oxford itself has been occupied. How is that war going for you? I'm guessing not well. 29% in favour of Harold of the English Revolt. So it feels like they're just counter-sieging each other. But Harold, formerly Harold II, the former king, the father of the current king, who decided that's not bloody good enough, I think he's just got more troops. Which is surprising, because I guess that just means presumably more cars decided to stay out of this one. 
Meanwhile, the war up north is going pretty much perfectly as far as I'm concerned, which is uh, Norway is just going around, slowly trashing, like, large parts of Scotland. So they've just trashed this area, now they're going to trash this area, and basically leave Scotland massively impoverished and just occupied. Scotland, meanwhile, is going around and doing exactly the same thing. Trashing Norway, just basically wrecking them economically, and also... Who the heck are you? That is... Okay, there's just been a Germanic uprising. Hello, do we know who you are exactly? No, but it's led by some guy called Scoffed. Good name. Excellent name, in fact. So, I'm not sure exactly where you've come from, but you seem to be trashing a bit of Sweden. Go and trash Norway. Go on, trash Norway. It'll be great. Because, yeah, if Scotland just basically travels around Norway slowly trashing it, at the same time as Norway is just travelling around Scotland slowly trashing it, then this war is going to take 10 bajillion years to end, because these guys are just going to trash each other's country. And every benefit that you get from taking a bit of Scotland, you're going to counter it by taking a bit of Norway. In the end, both of these countries are just going to end up heavily occupied and very, very badly damaged. So, good, that will make an inevitable war of independence against Norway a lot bloody simpler. Although, oh, hang on, what the bloody hell just happened there? Why did that just flick to, to 65%? I'm not sure, but I'm going to work under the assumption you just took something really, really flipping important. Ah, yes, of course, and I can actually move my Chancellor around now. Good, because right now he's being literally bloody useless. So, I don't need to improve relations with my Lord, because my Lord's not where he is, so that doesn't help very much. He could fabricate a claim over here. The thing is, extremely good quality Chancellors have a chance when they actually get sent over to an area that's like in a duchy, or a petty kingdom in this case, of actually engineering a claim on the entire duchy. It's only a small chance. I think it goes up as their diplomacy skill goes up. But, okay. I can either basically send him over here to try and gain some more land, because sooner or later I'm going to need to just have some more land, because I just need more land, more tax, more troops to break free of Norway. Or I send him around the world basically just to get my relationship up with my liege, just to basically make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. Yeah, right now my liege is not keen by... Oh, outraged by succession change laws. And will be for, like, 30 years. Oh. Well, that's not good. How do you feel about the rest of your court just out of interest? And particularly the rest of your vassals? Oh. Right. Everyone else? No, that's their opinion of... Of you. What's your opinion of them? I'm not sure where I actually check that. Because in this rather little useful screen over here, that says, yeah, the opinion of Caddock and the opinion of... The liege. I'm not sure whether I can see what someone else's court's opinion of them is, which I guess makes sense because I'm not sure how I'd know that. So, this territory over here belongs to King Magnus. Let's just quickly get him back on side, nice and quick. We'll move this guy over soon, but yeah, so improve diplomatic relations. You can do that over here, please. There we go. So, improve relations with my lord. Basically, that should start flying up very quickly. And how exactly is the succession question going, by the way? It is going... Uh, yeah, it's pretty much overwhelming in his favour. And it looks like just about everyone's going to have voted by this point. So, uh, yeah, the counts, the bishops, everybody gets a say, pretty much. Except if I eventually become a king, then it will just be the dukes and the vassals that get a say. I like this, though. This is fine. I mean, you know, the fact that John doesn't get to be king right now doesn't mean he won't be king one day. If anything, this is better, because if John became king tomorrow because I just dropped dead, then we don't really know what sort of person John's going to turn out to be. He might turn out to be terrible. This way, at least, we can be pretty confident that someone fairly decent is going to end up on the throne. Though he is still throwing a bit of a strop about it, and apparently will be annoyed for... <laughs> He'll be annoyed for the next 30 years! That is how long my son is going to hold a grudge. Grow up, John. You'll get your chance to be king. Oh, flip. Another English revolt has just actually broken off. There's now an English revolt, which is... Uh, hang on. Who's actually running that? Is it actually Morcar? Oh, yeah. It's Morcar. Morcar has now declared an English revolt at the exact same time as Harold II has declared an unrelated English revolt. Hang on. What's the difference? This is the English revolt and... Also, the English Revolt. How much England is there left at this point? 
Not much. It's basically Kent, Wessex, and the one I can't pronounce. So England is right now split in... Split in three. Okay. So you've got... Wait, how many wars do you have right now? Oh. No, no, no. Also, Wiltshire has revolted because you tried to actually take the title back. Oh, no. So, more cars coming in. The problem is... Oh, it's only 9% in favour of Harold of England now. So, potentially, you've managed to win a battle in return or take some land back. So, England's basically... England's really on fire right now. England is currently split into three. You know, if I did want to take some land off England, now would be a really, really excellent time to do it, quite possibly. Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Also, Medea has just hit the age where she could do with a childhood focus. Don't you worry, Medea. What do we know about you? Uh, intrigue potentially could be just a tiny bit higher. Okay, we'll see where that goes. I'll give you... Hang on, what's the one that's playful? Here we go, etiquette for playfulness. We'll see if maybe you could be useful to us down the line. Because I believe uh, female family members that are extremely close to you can be spy masks. That's like the only female person that's allowed on the council at the beginning of the game. So we'll see how you get on. And the best thing is, because the Kingdom of England exists under Agnatic Gavel kind, uh, yeah, actually, his own father is the heir. So if this guy gets killed in battle, then... Oh, hello, what just... Oh, hello! Does this involve me in any way? I hope it doesn't involve me. So that is... Oh... That is a big, big army of English rebels just basically trashing the hell out of England. Okay, would you mind just staying away from me, by the way? Because I belong to Norway, so just basically naff off. Don't get involved, please. Yeah, the English are completely screwed. The English are so, so screwed right now. Do I even have a claim on England? I could get in on this. No, tragically, I've got no good claim on England. But yeah, the problem England has is it's currently got 10 bajillion claimants. And I think they've all decided to scrap it out right now. Though, casting my eyes abroad, it could be worse. Right now, this is France, and this is the French Revolt. <laughs> Apparently, the French rebels control pretty much all of flipping France. Blimey, who's running that? Geoffrey of the French Revolt, apparently, from House d'Anjou. So, he's doing pretty well for himself. Ah, I think I've figured out why uh, Scotland suddenly started doing a lot worse. So, um, Magnus II of Norway caught Prince Duncan of Scotland, and he's been released from the King's Dungeon, except I can't help but notice... He's, um, he's not looking so hot. Severely injured, disfigured. Oh, blimey. Did, did you do that to him? Did you actually, like, catch him and then just start, like, mutilating him down in a dungeon? He's flipping patient and charitable. He was a nice guy. Okay. Blimey, well, you know what? I'm not too surprised he's decided to suddenly jump over to the army and help murder you. And I'm becoming increasingly worried that there is just no cure for the Great Pox. Because while Duke Caddock is still there, yeah, unfortunately, it does seem like uh, that's not going to get cured. And in a few years' time, yeah, 1084, the successful treatment's going to wear off. And also, owes money to... Ah, Temple Vast Opinion minus 10. Well, that's fine. We will... We'll pay them back sooner or later. Chill out. I'm working on some improvements. Look, they're happening right now. Wait, hang on. They're happening somewhere else. And speaking of which, my zeal and religious beliefs have led me to become more respected and given me more prestige. If I had known this sooner, then you wouldn't have syphilis and be dying of it. I'm not sure where you're going with that one, Caddock. Ah, there we go. Castle walls already in production. Very, very nice indeed. Now, when that happens, can we actually get the castle town done immediately? That's going to require... 287 gold. That's that's not nothing. That's not nothing at all. Right now we're gaining plus four. Hmm. Interesting. Ah, this is fun. Over in decision, seek treatment, which I can't do right now because I'm already under the effect of a successful treatment. So that's fun. Any chance I could seclude with courtiers? I'm not secluded with courtiers. I'm fine. None of the above must be true. I should probably get rid of my doctor and hire a new one, by the way. That strikes me as a useful sort of thing. Hang on, a child wants something. Also, various people were saying in the comments, oh, I should just expel the Jewish moneylenders. Uh, it looks like I can't, actually. I didn't want to anyway, because, you know, it felt like the wrong thing to do. But I can't do it anyway, because, yeah, I'm not independent. There's various reasons why it looks like I can't actually do this, in fact. And here we go, John. So how have you been getting on? It's time for an education, my boy. So you are willful, 
which unfortunately makes you very bad at diplomacy. Yeah, you see, this is why you don't get to be king yet, unfortunately. Now, he's an idolizer, but willful. So, idolizer is not good, but willful might be good for military. Idolizer might be good for learning education. Hmm. You could make a good priest in future, but to be honest, I'd rather have you married off somewhere else. I mean, right now, intrigue is pretty good. Intrigue's pretty good. I'm just going to actually give you the intrigue education, even though you don't have a benefit for it. Because we might find a use for you yet, John. We might find a use for you yet. And with a base intrigue of six, yeah, I think I'll give you a go. And yes, indeed, we've already got a spy master who's his guardian giving him instruction. So, hopefully, those two things together will work out pretty well. Because this guy is elusive shadow. So, I'm hoping because he has that educational trait, that means he's more likely to pass it on to those he trains. And I'm just fascinated by what's going on in England right now, because England is going to change hands at least once, possibly flipping more, I don't know. Because <laughs> it does distinctly feel like, uh, yeah, there's, there's big changes on the cards here. He is actually losing all three of the wars he's fighting right now. I'm pretty sure his army is trashed. It's just a question of who's actually going to win first, because uh, Elfgar has managed to jump straight up to... Wait, what happened to... To Morkar. Is Morkar dead or something? Well, in either case, that's the one I'm pretty sure that's coming from up north. So, that's jumped to 45% very quickly. But, Harold II, former Harold II, is already up to like 70%. Oh, and better and better news for Norway. They've got themselves a revolt on their hands. So, Magni of the Shetlander Peasant Revolt. Let's declare a peasant revolt on, yeah, poor King Magnus II. Luckily, he does actually have quite a few troops here, so we should be able to put that one straight down. That one's not too bad, but still. Norway, weak right now. England, incredibly weak right now. France, flipping battered. The problem is, I can't actually do anything to get free from Norway, because I can't declare independence. You see, I've got myself a valid reason to declare war. That's absolutely fine. I could fight a war of independence, and honestly, I could probably afford the mercenaries, to actually make it stick. But, before I do that, I've got to break the non-aggression pact. But I can't break the non-aggression pact till everyone's at peace. And these bloody people are not going to be at peace because Scotland and bloody Norway just keep punching each other in the face on the far side of the world. Oh, flip. I think Ken just... Wait, hang on. Did Ken just form a third separate... Re I think Ken just formed a separate third rebellion. Oh, God. England has got, like, nothing left. Nothing left at all. At this point, hang on, the lieges. This is literally all England has. It's in, like, actual England, England. So Kent's decided he wants to get involved too. So he's attacking King Magnus of England in his English Revolt War for England. <laughs> I think you're a bit late, to be honest. Oh, bloody hell, you're very late to the party. So at this point, Magnus has... How many wars has Magnus got on right now? He's got four wars on. This is amazing. And Harold of the English Revolt is at 96%. So, I think Harold II might be about to come back. But if he comes back, does that mean he immediately has to... Oh! Did it just happen? Yep. King Magnus of England just died in battle at the age of 30. So, England is currently ruled by... Yeah! Harold II's back! <laughs> Except he's got one major problem. Which is, um, the rebellions are still ongoing. <laughs> They don't stop. The new rebellions are now just rocking in. So how's that war going right now? So that's currently 49%. Yeah, okay, so the benefit still carries over. Right. So the army from up north is now... Oh, bloody hell. So I think Morkar's going to get his wish anyway. Oh, the castle walls have been built. Yay, the castle walls. So that should get me a little bit of extra money right there. Love it. Now they're in Cornwall, aren't they? Yeah, castle walls. Nice. And sadly, I need to actually invest in military tech to keep that going up. And at this point, I could actually upgrade to a castle town for a pretty major increase in tax yield. I just need this much money, which I might actually have pretty soon. So I guess I could actually get that done. I can either repay my debt sensibly or splurge all my money on vanity projects. Ooh. Ooh. Tough. And, oh, Oh, what the? Whoa, 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 whoa. My daughter's dead. What? Why did that happen? She just died of flu. I feel like I got much of a warning about that. Okay, which which daughter was that? 
My daughter died from a bad case of flu. Oh, Wait, was she the one who was- Oh! She was- She was the one I sent to live up here! I'm so sorry! I didn't know you were gonna be sent somewhere so cold! I do feel like that one was kind of on me! Oh, and that means technically, uh, me and Magnus aren't actually tied by marriage anymore. Though, my grandson apparently also flipping hates me. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't want to hand over my entire kingdom to Norway. I'm so flipping sorry. I mean, the nice thing is, as soon as Magnus II passes on, my grandson should actually become the actual king of Norway. Which is kind of cool. Hopefully he'll be nice to me. To the glorious Duke Caddock. Oh, it's another commander offer. Yeah, sorry. No, for some reason you don't seem to mind it when I say no to that one anywhere near as much. Yeah, you really hate it when I refuse offers of guardianship, but saying no to commander role, honestly, he doesn't seem to care. And uh, yeah, honestly, that's that's fair enough. That's that's really fair enough because uh, he kind of knows how much he's screwed right now. Also, apparently it's just getting worse right now. So I think one of the very, very minor vassal counts decided to refuse to hand over his territory. And as a result, there's now a war. Oh, hang on. That could actually be the perfect way to force this guy to declare war on me. If I could encourage him to try and actually take my territory, I refuse, that's an automatic war. And once I've got an automatic war on, that will automatically break the non-aggression pact. That might actually speed up my independence. Ooh, that could be of interest. Also, here's something fun I've just noted. So, um, the current King of England, at least for the next five minutes, because Harold II has a bit of a habit of having short reigns, uh, he owes me a favour, you know. <laughs> Ooh, this is interesting. What could I do with you? You see, I'm not fussed about England itself, but... You hold a few things over here, don't you? Yes, this little... This little county. Now, admittedly, if I try and um, play silly games with this, to try and basically use the favour to force him to accept a marriage, they might get that over to me. I'm just basically inviting trouble, because then the King of England will just day your A claim straight back onto it. That's probably a bad idea. Also, why have you not actually succeeded yet? You were supposed to, like, you know, get on with improving my relationships. If I actually... No, if I don't even want that guy to like me anymore... Okay... New thing, new thing, get over here, get me some, like, friends over in this direction. And when I say friends, I mean entirely fabricated documents. Get over here, fabricate me some claims, lovely. Oh, I just found out what happened to Morkar. He died in battle, unfortunately. So, as it turns out, the largest, most powerful army on the field right now is currently, technically, being ruled by a 12-year-old child. Well, this, this is just intriguing. I mean, he's going to end up being King of England. This guy 100% is. There's no way he's not. He's got the biggest army, the most land. He's going to steamroll over and already weakened Harold II. And then Kent's not going to be able to fight back against any of that. Indolent, conscientious, currently in hiding, gregarious. And yeah, focusing on education. He's fine. Well... Let's just have a little look see about maybe arranging a bit of a betrothal for you. Any chance we can sort that out or can I not do that because you're in hiding? Yeah, he's not showing up, so I'm guessing it's because he's in hiding. Fine, we'll just let time tick by here, see how this rebellion goes. But England is just... Hang on, let's just go over to the... Uh, if we just zoom out a bit, let's just go over to the economic map for a second. Because uh, I can map his... Oh, oh, England. Oh, I'm so sorry. Though. Actually, I'm... I'm more sorry about what the hell's happened to, to Gwyneth here. What on earth happened here? Ah, furious peasants right now. So Wales is having some problems just with local issues. But England has just basically been repeatedly sieged and counter-sieged for a long time. Oh, yeah. These, these areas are in trouble. They've been badly damaged. The levees are currently significantly drained a large part of the time. Oh, dear. Oh, flipping dear. Oh, I think it just happened pretty darn quickly. It only took a matter of months, so... <laughs> Harold II is... Oh, hang on. What the heck happened to Gloucester? Gloucester? The county of Gloucester has 
Why is the county of Gloucester independent? How on earth did you manage to wrangle that? I've no bloody clue, but, but hang on the flip here. Is this actually... Is that now an independent state? The county of Gloucester, Earl Edmund of Gloucester. It does appear to be. I mean, on the realm map, hang on, just go over to, to proper realm map here. That is being marked as... Is that a separate... I think it's a separate country. Right, well, Gloucester just declared independence from England. I don't know quite how that happened, but it did. And right now he's actually only got himself one daughter. Keep an eye on them. If I just marry them to a mid-level ranking child inside my dynasty, I can actually get Gloucester. Though then again, dangerous. Better to play games here. Ah, and I see what just happened to Wales. The old king is dead. Fine. So, Powers decided to actually go independent for the time being, presumably because he got split among his children. I'm guessing that the rules are, yeah, gavel kind. So it got all split up. That's what's going on here right now. So that's one guy, that's... Have you got just like a little shepherd's staff in your picture? Right, marvelous, well done. So yeah, right now, every single one of these little areas has been broken up, which is marvelous. But I think I still technically have a, a pact against Gwyneth, right? No, it looks like the non-aggression pact does not survive the death of a king. So I am no longer non-aggressive against these guys. If I go to war to try and seize these territories, these guys might decide to get involved. Though, bear in mind, their levies right now are badly damaged. They might not be able to contribute that much. Also, I'm just going to say right now this is downright unfair. So Duke Harold of Essex is still apparently free and leading troops in Surrey somehow. His wife has actually been taken captive. And who are you? Who are you? Where did you... Wait, what? What happened to the kid who was... Wait, hang on. Who... Who are you exactly? Because you, under this regent, were totally ruling this faction a minute ago. So, there might have just been another election. I'm not sure. But I tell you what, this guy's not actually that bad, really. Yeah, Diplomacy 12, Marshal 17, Stewardship 11. That's all right. He's from the House of Wessex. Apparently, yeah, controlling County of Bedford, uh, House of Wessex. Currently going to war against these bastards and doing very well. So he just needs to basically mop up Kent at this point, And that'll be the end of it. Tough soldier, a hunter, brave, diligent, gregarious, kind. Uh, and... Uh, Better and better, me and him are quite similar. We seem to get on. Okay, me and this guy, this could work. In fact, I imagine he's going to be king for quite some time. He's age 32, right. Time to sort this out. I think it's time to potentially get you married to one of my... Oh, Janet! Darn it, he says no, boo. I think he knows about the gentle warts. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm out of grown-up daughters to try and marry away. So that is not going to fly. Oh, bloody hell, my wife just passed away as well. We need to stop everyone dying right now. Seriously, I've got a doctor. Why exactly do I have... Oh, you're known as the Just. Oh. Wow, Count Reese the Just. No, it's not Reese. I'm just going to call him Reese. Count Reese the Just of Glamorgan. Lardy flipping da. So, yes, indeed. We've got to have scarred, diligent, patient, honest, charitable, brave, and just, of course. Okay. So as it turns out, he is doing a marvellously good job as the actual little vassal count of that area. So well done to that guy. And of course, don't forget, he's now actually got his own little court, which is adorable. So he's got his own steward and all the rest of it. Actually, let's have a look see at your steward. How good your steward? Actually, he's not bad. Well done. You've put together a competent court there, including his own wife as spy master, who's... Reese. she's got zero intrigue. This is not a good spy master. Except, of course, the very best spy master would want everyone to think they had zero intrigue. Ah, cunning. Very, very clever. Well done, Maria. So, my wife's dead, which is, you know, very unfortunate. But that means there is currently a duke who's actually up for grabs, i.e. me. I'm 51 and I'm dying of syphilis, but we probably don't mention that when we set up the online dating profile. Also, I think you need a bit of a haircut. There we go. Let's actually just neaten this up a little bit. Yeah, that's 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 probably a bit better. 
And we've got ourselves... Yeah, that's better. Look at that. Oh, that looks so much better. It's a shame that hair dye hasn't been invented yet, but it'll flip in do. Right, let's go shopping for a new girlfriend. I mean, really, in some ways, this is actually kind of perfect. Because we managed to be able to grab a tiny bit of land into our territory just before this guy passes on. Ooh, but that's assuming you can actually get out a child, isn't it? Yes. Right, we need to get someone good. We need to find someone really, really good. No, not a princess of the English revolt. Bad idea. Not gonna end well. I just arranged the women who were eligible by diplomacy and Janed was top. Game. I'm not marrying my... What is she technically... No, I'm not marrying my own niece. Like, just in general. And also because... Why not fairness? I guess I'm already dying of an STD, so it doesn't really matter. No, I'm not doing it anyway, because it's wrong. You see, I wouldn't mind trying to squeeze out one final child who could actually, yeah, have some form of nice claim passed on. Unfortunately, a princess who's actually got a weak claim on the Kingdom of England that I could actually pass on to a successor is currently zero years old. So, I suspect, Caddock, that's not going to work out. No, let's just pass on that one. I may have been a bit optimistic with this entire plan. The number of unmarried women in the world floating around is quite limited. Would you believe I suspect that the good women get snapped up pretty quickly? So, probably what I ought to do is... Yeah, just go for someone who's actually of childbearing age. Just. She's 42. I think it's 45. You can't have any more children. So, if me and you could get out one child, that child would inherit a strong claim on this county over here. So, that might be nice to go and get. Honestly, I'd rather have something over here, but I'm not sure any of that's going to fly. And yeah, apparently there's literally three adult women in the world willing to marry me, so possibly word of Caddock's condition has already spread. Oh yeah, that whole thing, attraction opinion minus 30, yes. Yes, that would explain a lot. Fine, I think we're just going to have to take what we can get, to be honest. Let's just go with her and see if we can just keep that claim floating around in the family. So, there you go, Caddock. One final bit of happiness in your autumn years, I suppose. And now we can either have, ah, gold or prestige. No, take the gold. Yes, take the gold. Let's get a nice little tithe related to all of that. He says yes to that. And uh, my marriage yet? Hang on. Need to be married. Check the marriage. There we go. Right, so focus on family. Need to actually be getting myself some family. And also, oh, hang on. How old is John at this point? Because, yeah, my entire goal this whole game has been grooming an heir. And we're still not there. John is 30. <laughs> He's still bloody three years off. And, oh, Samson of Somerset is trying to... Is he? Well, why is he doing that exactly? Does he not like the new wife? Oh, no, sorry. Somerset, not Devon. Ah, it's an English person. An English person has sent a low-quality chancellor to basically try and deal with that. I see. So, he's trying to find documents and supporters to legitimise a claim... No, we need to stay the hell out of this. I can't... Though actually, he can't do anything with the claim. The only thing he can do with the claim would be declare war on Norway itself, which would be bad. Okay. So, 50 gold to bribe him. Make him disappear. So, that's 50-50. And that costs me piety. Um, Just try and make him disappear. All right, and coin flip. The assassins I said failed miserably. Darn it. Right, so there might be a fabricated claim coming in sooner rather than later. But Somerset, you my good man. So presumably the guy in question is your chancellor. Yes, this guy. This was the guy that was actually flagged to me right there. Maybe we can just plot to kill him in general. Then maybe we shouldn't bother. He's just been sent an agent. Killing him might not change anything. Also, I think Caddock's starting to lose it. The dark sin of heresy has infected everyone around me. Satan is winning the war for humanity's souls. No one is pure except me. That is... That's not... Oh, no, I'm a lunatic. I'm actually a lunatic at this point. So, my vassals are going to hate me. I'm less attractive, but I was already dying of syphilis. So, honestly, I wasn't exactly the prize fish at the stall. Still... If I run into other lunatics we like each other, I think I'm getting a bit, yeah, 
I'm, I'm getting a bit on. I feel like it might be time to, if we can, squeeze out just one. One more child, if at all possible, with the new wife. Okay, and then, oh, apparently, the wife hates me. Right, well, I guess I can't really... <laughs> I can't blame her massively, to be honest. She is actually currently married to a lunatic who's suffering from syphilis. <laughs> I think we should just bring on the new king at this point. At this point, it's starting to get a little bit on the embarrassing side. And right, Dorset is doing exactly the same bloody thing. So England are definitely looking interested at my domain right now. But right now, hang on, both of these are... You report into Wessex. Who do you report into? You report into Wessex as well. Fine. So logically... Like, Dorset can't do anything about this, and Wessex can't do anything about this. The only way that they can actually try and fulfil those claims is declaring war against Norway. So, hopefully, this doesn't actually matter. What's the claim, by the way? The claim is... Yeah, I see here. So, the claim is, technically, against Devon. So, you, Eldmund, the Earl of Dorset, you, I think, my good man, could do with going down. So, oh... Apparently that's going to be tricky to do because we don't have much plot power. Well, let's just see what we can do here. Plot to kill, and let's just have a little Luke see. This is the first assassination we've ever planned. So, right now the plot power is very, very low indeed. Who exactly is interested in... Aha! This guy right here. So, if I were to toss some money at this guy who's a local, he might be willing to... Uh, Help me out with that. Make sure you don't toss money at anyone who's got like a trait like drunkard or anything though. Otherwise, uh, yeah, he'll kind of ruin the plot. This guy, not so interested. Okay. So I could get the actual plot power up a little bit, but honestly, not much. And how much of a gift do I actually have to send to him? Oh, it's only 16. Yeah, go for it. So send him 16.2. And then invite him to the plot. And now he'll say yes. So time ticks along. And in a moment he will say, oh yes, I will totally help you with this plot. So he's, oh. Hang on. He decided to go ahead and, right, so everybody is launching claims against me, are they? Everyone's just got bloody claims against Devon. Oh no, that was the same guy. Fine. It was just the fact that he got the claim, then decided to actually pursue it. But that's fine. We're going to see if we can just uh, kill him. And the thing is, because it's a fabricated claim, it doesn't get passed on. So if he just dies in an unfortunate accident round about now, that'd be absolutely flipping fine. Would you like to come to this plot? No, you would not like to come to this plot. Right. I need to find someone around there who wants to join the plot. And tragically, no one's available. Fine. I think with plot power of 41, the plot physically can't actually happen. I think it needs to hit like 50 minimum, so we'll keep that there, just in case in the future. And also, why is Gloucester independent? It's the most wacky thing. And uh, yeah, actually, it's taking a surprising amount of time for you guys to actually deal with the Kent Uprising. I'm genuinely surprised. I should figure out who this guy is, by the way. So, this new king, who are you exactly? So, your parents were... Some random people who are partly in prison. Your grandparents was King Edmund Ironside. You're not particularly interesting. I don't know where you really came from or how you ended up being King of England, but okay. So Edgar is just, I guess, the King of England now. Also, he had two sisters and both of them died while going to the toilet, which is very odd. They did it six years apart as well, so you'd think the second person who died on the toilet would have learnt from the first. Oh, but finally some action over here. Hang on, there's... Wait, Duke Caddock has voted for... Yes, yes I have, because someone told me to vote that way and I wanted a favour from him. So that's great, the levy shifted church obligations. Yeah, we got action over here. So the Scots finally decided to come home, having occupied most of flipping Norway. And thus this place is... Uh, yeah, damaged badly. The levees are... Oh, the levees are just drained. The levees in all these places are drained. Norway right now basically has no army. Like, none whatsoever. Like, it's got a tiny bit over there, I suppose. And it's got the standing army. But that's like 
3,000. It's not much at all. But Scotland has finally come home. And it appears that it's come home to die. And yes, that passed too. Marvellous. So, yeah. The Scottish army's been defeated. That should be 100%. So that war should finally, finally be cocking over. And then straight after that, I'm going to guess... There we go. So there's now peace between these guys. Are you technically at peace now, Norway? Or are we still technically at war because of the bloody rebellion business? Back in Cornwall, meanwhile, Elfwyn has arrested an armed man with ragged armor on a spotty horse. He says the man claims to be a hedge knight, but does not believe the statement. So, either order him released, that actually loses some prestige for Elfwyn, and also makes Elfwyn hate me, but I get some piety, or that's very clearly a bandit, lose some actual piety, but gain some prestige and also, yeah, everyone gets prestige. Fine, the fake hedge knight, I'm going to assume it's a fake hedge knight, because Elfwyn thinks so, I shall agree with that. Now, stop, just chill out for a second, hang on, what do you want by the way? Ooh, you also, yeah, right, let's just gather some favours up, let's just gather some favours up across Norway, because that can be very, very useful indeed. Now, 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 I think I just noticed something very, very interesting over here, which is... I could apparently declare a war of independence. And what happened to the non-aggression... We had a non-aggression pact, didn't we? What happened to the non-aggression... Right, well... This strikes me as potentially an excellent sort of time to go to war with Norway for independence. Because, look at them, right now... They are crippled. They can't call up these forces. They've got, like, you know, some small number of forces they can call up. But that's, that's like, 200 men in the levy right there. There's no levies here. The levies have been drained dry. This is just a, a fantastic opportunity. I don't think there's going to be a better opportunity for this for some time. But if I do this, if I actually do this right now, then... There are English people right next door that have got claims. They might decide this is their opportunity to move against me. And if a claim shows up over here, I mean, should I wait until I've got this down? I mean, I don't know if I'm going to get an opportunity this good again. And apparently there's a new bloody war underway as well. Kind of, but notice, yeah, one of the little Swedish... What are you? You're a Republic of... Republic of Visby... Grand Mayor reporting into, yeah, the King of Sweden. So, uh, there is a force of Swedes uh, heading straight at this city over here. They want to be having that. So, uh, straight into multiple more wars. The Norwegian army going to struggle to reinforce much at this point. I think there's a big group of rebels up here somewhere, if you haven't already killed them, that you need to go and take care of. The Swedes are marching into Norway. This... This could be just the right moment for me to make my move. This could be the perfect, perfect moment for that. But on the other hand, if I go independent, then at that point I am a lot more vulnerable to attacks from England. I would need to, yeah. Before I do that, I'm going to need to engineer a non-aggression pact with England. Somehow, I just need to find a way to make that happen. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? I think we will call this part there. We will pick that up next time as I try and pick my way through this strange new world I find myself in. And yes, we kind of, at this point, maybe we start to just live in hope that Duke Caddock might just peacefully pass away in his sleep. Because he has started to become a bit of an embarrassment to the mighty realm of Cornwall. We will see how we crack on next time, ladies and gentlemen. Can I secure my independence? Can I stay safe against England? And can I make some progress in Wales? We shall see. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Crusader Kings 2. Thank you very much and goodbye. No, sadly, I cannot be the Santa Claus of murder tonight. So apparently, even though this thing is... Oh, no, no, you can't. No, you most certainly can't. Okay. Is that the symbol meaning I'm about to pull her over? Yep, there we are. There we... Oh! I feel like she didn't necessarily survive that. No, she's very dead.